Thank you all. So, as you know, we've been moving our way through the eight limbs according to Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, um, which is 1,500 years old, this lovely book. We're now moving on to chapter three. Um, if you are interested in reading about yogic philosophy and the ethics of yoga, I really recommend this book. Um, so we're dealing with the sixth limb. And as you know, we've got the first limb is the yamas, ethics, outer ethics. The second limb, niyamas, inner ethics. You've got asana, which you're familiar with, which is the um, shapes that we bring ourselves into outwardly, that, you know, comes inwards. Pranayama, which is the breath work. We then have pratyahara, which was last week. There we go. So pratyahara last week sense withdrawal and when we get to that bridge between pranayama and pratyahara things become a little bit more um, about the inward interoceptive aspect of yoga hi susie i'm recording so we're going to get started um, so today we're dealing with dharana which comes after pratyahara so you've got sense withdrawal which is akin to being like a tortoise and you have the limbs, the sensory limbs, your sight, your hearing, your taste, your touch, etc. out there in the world. That's great. That's how we find ourselves in the world. But if we get lost in that, we swim around with the senses and we get uh, into a state of bondage with sensory input, we become lost. So the idea is with sense withdrawal, you draw those limbs in into the central axis and move into a state of awareness, which is what yoga is about. This week, we're focusing on the next level into meditation, the beginning of Samyana, which is the latter three stages uh, moving towards meditation. Dharana means concentration or the one-pointed mind. So I find this really interesting because this is very much entangled in my painting practice, moving into states of the self, the other and the transitional space in between. So it's it's fascinating grounds because you're moving into ideas of consciousness and what that is. So we're gonna start on our backs in semi soothed pine in our position on our spines with our feet touching down into the mat. So we're coming into a position where the head is sensibly balanced on top of the spine and the pelvis is in neutral or thereabouts. And just allow yourself firstly, in this constructive rest pose, time for me to get my hat off I think, constructive rest pose, use it as such. You're drawing your senses and your awareness inwards. You're noticing the weight of your spine resting down into the mat, the weight of your feet, the back of the head, and coming into the body. So the sensory input now is really about your body in space. We have to start somewhere in order to come inwards. Just noticing how that feels. And because dharana or concentration is very much linked to a practice called Trataka. Trataka is utilizing the gaze. It's a candle gaze or a lingam gaze concentration practice called a shakkarma, which is a cleansing technique. So we'll be moving into that later on in this practice. Firstly, we're starting on our backs and we're gonna utilize the gaze to come into our basic exercise, just to begin to touch into the connection between the eyes and the sub occipital muscles around the back of the head and the neck muscles. So firstly, we're looking over to the left shoulder, noticing how much space there is in the neck, how much tension is in the neck and how much mobility there is in the neck before turning the gaze over to the right side. Now, when you're doing this movement, 
Notice if the chin is sticking out towards the ceiling, as is very common, especially if you have a desk job and you may have extra kyphosis or a hunchedness around the top of the shoulders. So if that's the case, the twisting of the neck is going to be maybe slightly uncomfortable. You need to mindfully draw, draw the chin in and bring the gaze over to the side. You're lengthening out the back of the neck muscles and that rotation is much more functionally useful. Turning over to the right, noticing how much space there is. And it's really interesting, perhaps, for you to notice, if you do this regularly, how much mobility there is in that area. And I'm noticing, bizarrely, that there's very little tension in my neck, which is astonishing. And just notice that for yourself, especially if you're not used to just literally noticing how it feels to turn the head, you may not really have anything to compare it to. Now, what we're going to do is bring the hands to a clasp behind the back of the head. The elbows wing out to the side, the chin tucks in, the face is focused up to the ceiling. So we have this drawing inwards of the chin, really important, and the elbows are relaxed outwards. Now, notice what happens if we're tense and cold. This movement here with the elbows may move into the spine. Now, you know when you get cold and it gets into the bones and everything gets a bit tight, that will stiffen the body. So, you know, hopefully you're in a space that is warm. Allow for the elbows to wing out to the side and we're going to gaze over to the right corner of the eye socket, locking the gaze locking the drishti as it's called in yoga but keeping the face pointing up towards the ceiling and we allow for those eyes to drop over to the right hand side allowing for whatever needs to come about to come about so we're not forcing any specific response we're simply looking for the signs of transition into a calmer parasympathetic nervous system state so we're looking for the signs of down regulation. So those signs would be salivation or perhaps a sense of a sigh coming about or just a gentle movement towards a calmness. And you may feel that as akin to coming into a state where you feel at ease within your body. Now you can lock the eyes to the side here, so the right corner of the eye socket for 30 seconds or more. And let's hold that for slightly longer. I'm salivating like crazy. <laughs> it's uh, something I do regularly, so once you've noticed any transitional state, and indeed if you've noticed there isn't a transitional state, that's okay. It's all good, there's no right or wrong, we're just simply noticing. Bring the gaze through centre and now lock the eyes to the left side of the eye socket. To the left side of the eye socket. Holding the gaze here. Noticing again whether there's any transitional signs coming about. Moving into that state of rest and digest. The ventral vagus nervous system state that state of social engagement, the state of the digestive system working, that state of equanimity and of well-being essentially. So locking the eyes over to the left side of the eye socket for 30 seconds or longer. Now you may notice some change here or no change here. And just notice whatever is taking place. Now, if the body wants to sink into relaxation, there's something fighting against it, whether it's um, a sense of being cold, if there's anything that you need to relinquish here, please do. Lovely. And then bring the gaze up towards the centre. Notice if you feel dizzy, as can be quite common. And we're going to release the hands to the side of the body testing the mobility of the neck with the chin tucked in looking over to the left how does it feel does it feel like the head's going to fall off i promise you it won't or does it feel like there's a little bit more space 
turning the gaze over to the right. How does that feel? Again, does it feel like there's any more space? Noticing where there is more mobility in the neck. So if there's more mobility in the neck, that's brilliant. If you're not noticing any difference, that's absolutely fine. Essentially, sometimes, especially in our day, we can feel quite disconnected from our bodies. And that exercise at the beginning of our yoga session can be just an opportunity to come into the body. There may be other levels that we can deal with later on. So just notice how that felt. Bring the gaze back towards the centre and bring the knees in towards the body. We're coming into Apanasana. So Apanasana is a great one. It's wind relieving pose, drawing the knees in towards the center. You can bring the gaze up towards the feet coming into a tiny little ball. It's a really lovely place to be and you can roll from side to side and just ease into your Apanasana. How is that? Lovely. So when we're working with this Dharana, this concentration, there's a lot of focus with the third eye center Anjana chakra which is situated in the forehead. Now the Anjana chakra, that center of intuition and concentration, is also linked to the pineal gland which is situated in the middle of the skull. So it's a pie sky gland that sits in the skull that is in charge of the production of melatonin in the body, our circadian rhythms, and the difference between letting in the light and the darkness. It's also interesting that we don't know a lot about the pineal gland. So some of our focus today is going to be about that aspect of the vision, of the gaze, of the Anjana chakra, of the pineal gland, so the centre of concentration. And we'll be working with that through eagle pose as one of our poses. So while we're at our backs here, we're going to explore that asana and what it is in your body. So we've got the knees bent, the spine is in flexion. We're going to cross the legs. So the right leg is over the left leg, a bit like we're just crossing our legs sat on a chair. And then you may find that you can double wrap the legs by bringing the back of the foot underneath the shin or the calf. And the toes are in dorsiflexion, so they're flared. Now, if you want to focus on a sense of strength, and your energy is high tonight, you can draw the knees away and explore drawing the knees in towards the abdominal region. Just be mindful to contain around the lumbar so we don't crunch into lumbar areas, especially if you have any um, sacroiliac instability. When we've come into our eagle legs, we're going to open the arms nice and wide. Just roll through the pelvis here before crossing the arms so the right arm comes over the left. And as we cross, you may be able to cross over past the elbow. So we've got this lovely crossing action. You may be able to feel into the back of the scapula and the rhomboids here. We're then going to bend the elbows and the back of the hands come together. Maybe. If you can do that, we're going to explore the double wrap. So the palms either come together or you stick with the back of the hands. So you come into your eagle arms. So it's quite an interesting bind. And then with the elbows, we're drawing the elbows up towards the chin and the knees draw away. Feeling that into the body as we exhale through nostrils, drawing the knees and the elbows together. Maybe the gaze comes up into a slight crunch, lifting the knees and elbows away from one another, keeping that lumbar nice and flat. Exhale, drawing knees and elbows together. Breathing, inhale, elbow knees together. Exhale, drawing together down through the front. And coming back through, we're going to open and release the arms into a T shape and drop the knees down to the side, keeping the shoulder blades fully grounded as we roll the knees over. Now the knees won't necessarily come all the way down to the ground. If you have a bolster, you can pop a bolster underneath or you can simply allow them to splay. The main thing is to keep the shoulder blades grounded onto the floor as one will want to lift. The right shoulder blade is gonna to want to lift. And you can explore bringing the gaze over to the right side, looking down the middle finger finishing off your Jatara Parabriti, 
feel supine, twist. Inhaling, allowing for the breath to come in through the nostrils, softening the belly, but being mindful of the fact that this rotation is fairly tight around the abdominal region. So the breath is restricted somewhat, but we're allowing for this concept of the fresh blood to flush through the abdominal organs. Notice if the gaze is happy to look over to the right hand. Breathing into your Jatara Parabhiti. Inhale, bring the gaze up through the center, roll the knees up towards the middle and unwrap the legs. Drawing the knees in, come through Apanasana, wind relieving pose, bring the gaze up, draw the knees in towards the chest. Lovely. And we're going to come through onto the other side. So this time the left leg is crossing over the right leg. We come into the cross leg position or this double bind where we link the front of the foot behind the shin, wake up those feet. So we've got the eagle legs or Garandasana legs sorted. We're going to open up that lovely wingspan, crossing over the left arm over the right, maybe coming beyond the elbows, feeling into the back of the scapula there before bending the elbows, bringing the back of the hands to meet or indeed bring the front of the palms together. And the idea is you raise the elbows up towards the chin. And we're going to exhale and explore the strength around the abdomen as we close and flex the spine. Gaze comes up, open, expand, draw the elbows and knees away from one another and exhale and draw inwards. Inhale, release away, exhale and feel into the strength within here. Lovely. Releasing, coming through and opening the wingspan before dropping the knees over to the right side this time, keeping that left shoulder blade grounded onto the mat. Coming into a position that works for you before bringing the gaze over to the left hand. How does the gaze feel to rotate the neck to the side? Now, if this does feel tricky for you, just bring the gaze up to the center. Coming into your Jatara Parabriti, your supine rotation. Breathing and letting the breath come in wherever it can come in. Feeling that lovely twisting action around the abdominal organs. All of these positions are really great for allowing for fresh blood to flush into an area that's been restricted. And this is a particularly good one for that. Breathing through the nostrils. Keeping that shoulder blade down. If the gaze is over to the side, bring the gaze up through center, lift the knees up towards the body and release the legs. Coming back into your Apanasana, coming into flexion. Really important, coming to flexion, rolling from side to side, feeling into the back of the body. So we're now going to come into all fours by rolling along the spine, using the legs here. Let's roll three times. Really utilise this action. It can be as small as you like. It's really up to you before crossing the shins over and coming into your all fours. So you can flick back if that works for you, or you can come back in a gentler plank. See if you can flatten the feet along the floor. How is that? Bring your hands down to the floor and pad through the hands, pressing down through the fingers, lifting and suctioning the palm to protect the wrist. Coming to the elbows with a slight bend of the elbows, coming into the shoulder blades, Feel the shoulder blades drawing together. There is, there's some strength there, there's some yield. You're not collapsing. So collapsing in your body will look like this. A lot of us can collapse. Some of us brace and push. We want to come into a sense of yield, somewhere in between, that sense of balance that's so important in yoga. 
So leading with the forehead and the crown of the head, we're going to come into your extension, bending at the elbows, drawing ourselves into your scared cats, pressing through into that lovely area, opening up the back of the body. We're going to inhale, come through neutral. Exhale, this time the forehead is just facing the end of the mat. So we're not leading with the chin. Allow for the extension to come through. Inhale and exhale, come through your lovely flexion. Opening up the back of the body before inhaling and exhale. So we exhale to arch the diaphragm and create more space for the extension. Always a reason for these movements to be breathed into in a certain way. We're going to finish on a flexion, flexing through the spine, because more often than not, we have these busy numbers that twinge and come through a neutral, but with the tailbone drawn down. So I'm just going to move this meditation cushion. We're going to come into bird dog, focusing the drishti, the gaze down in front of us. Ensure that your pelvis is stable before drawing the right arm, the left leg, all the way off the ground. Now this action doesn't have to come into the strongest action. You can be focusing on your balance with a smaller action. It doesn't have to be the case that you straighten the arm and the leg. We're extending across the midline of the body with our concentration and our focus fixed on the floor in front of us. Noticing where we're wavering, stretching through that middle finger and the base of the big toe. So dorsiflexion in the feet here, not pointing the flexion. Inhaling and exhaling, anchoring our minds on the breath and this fixed gaze, or drishti, as we call it in yoga, extending through. Now, make sure you're breathing. If you breathe and you ride the waves, the ebb of the, and the flow of your breath, it makes this bird dog really lovely. Just notice whether you're straining. How does this feel? If the hip point is lifting, draw it down, square off the hip and draw the limbs in to come over to the other side with no sense of dumping the weight, smoothly moving to the other side. Again, the gaze, the drishti, your concentrating is down on the mat, so we lengthen the back of the neck. Remember that we're dealing with dharana, concentration, a sense of one-pointedness in our bird dog today. Concentration is something that I think we all struggle with nowadays. To really focus and follow through with one activity for a period of time, whether it's yoga for an hour, an hour and a half, whether it's reading a book. Modern life does not often allow for that. So we have to train the mind to concentrate as that's really the bridge into meditation bringing the limbs down. Now, obviously, you can come into child's pose at any point. Coming to the other side, inhale, release, waves, limbs out. Imagining you're poking your head out like a tortoise, extending. And then exhale, we're bringing the knee and the elbow together. Coming into a flexion, drawing the limbs inwards. Inhale, release, lengthen expanding our limbs physically, literally, and then recoiling, bringing the knee and the elbow in. One more time. Expanding, extending, sending out the senses, the limbs, and exhale, drawing the knee and elbow in, bringing the limbs down. Coming to the other side, extending, Inhaling, reaching across that cross section of the body. This cross crawling movement is really important for our brain to create those synapses and that interconnectivity between the hemispheres of the brain. So we're inhaling and reaching, reaching across the body, exhaling, recoiling the limbs inwards, elbow to knee. Inhaling, training the mind to focus on this fairly simple activity, mapping this movement within the body. 
and draw the limbs down to come back into your tabletop and adjust as is necessary. So we're going to sink the hips down towards the feet, extend the arms out alongside the body and the forehead hopefully will come down either to the floor or bring the floor up to the forehead. So a lovely way of doing this because we don't all, we're not all going to be able to bring the forehead down because of anatomical reasons and you know how many times we've actually done this. So bring the ground up to the forehead because I want you to feel the pressure into the Anjana Chakra, into that area of intuition, in between the eyes, pressing down into that region of the body, breathing, releasing. And then if you've got the hands out in front of you here, can you bring the hands together in Anjali Mudra? The hands, the palms come together. And if you can get the hands and the arms into Anjali Mudra, can you lift the fingers to point up towards the ceiling? Closing the eyes. And then bring the hands to rest on the back of the head. Opening up around the underneath of the arms here. Breathing. Lovely. And then releasing the arms back down. See if you can bring the hands behind the buttocks, clasping the hands behind the sacrum, the tailbone. With that similar sense of feedback around the forehead, we're going to come into hair pose. So with the forehead down, we're going to roll up onto the crown bringing the arms up and over, rolling up into the crown area, so that flattened area, the fontanelle area that closes over about at two years old, so it's nice and soft so we can come out of the mother's womb down the birth canal, rolling back onto the forehead and expanding and rolling onto the crown of the head, bringing the hands over, rolling back onto the forehead, the buttocks come back, and roll onto the forehead, or rather onto the crown of the head, drawing the base or the heel of the hand together. So you've got a slightly stronger action moving into the shoulders. Just you know, be careful about your um, elbow here, Julia. Feeling into the crown of the head and roll back into your almost kneeling position. So we're now going to release the hands and bring them down into a forearm stance. So it feels like the arms can wrap inwards to lift the body. So there's lots of strength here. We've got two positions we can work with in our dolphin as we lift ourselves up. We can clasp the hands together, which we're familiar with, bringing the arms down. We've got this lovely little um, base of support. So we've got this little triangle. Or you can come into the forearm stance, which is like sphinx. We're resting the base of the arm down and we've got the sense of lift. The fingers are really important and key in this. So find your position for your base of support, whatever works for you. Positioning is really key here. You want this to be anatomically working for you and not trying to embody something that's not for your body. We're coming into dolphin, so tuck the toes under. Of course, your focus point is here, the forehead, the crown of the head. The head is going to follow through and relax as we lift the hips up towards the ceiling. If you're experiencing any migraines today or any eye issues, maybe avoid this one or come into forearm stand, so a forearm plank. Otherwise, with that sense of strength and lift, we're going to draw the hips up towards the ceiling, dropping and dangling the head. Now, how freely can you drop and dangle the head? I'm obviously lifting my head because I'm talking to you. So don't do as I do, do as I say. Dangle the head, lifting up through the arms, coming into dolphin, feeling the lovely sensation around the back of the legs, concentrating and dropping the head down. How does that feel? Breathe. Breathing through the nostrils and you can obviously come down and come into your child's pose. We're going to come back up into the dolphin and explore lifting each leg up, bring it into another element. Now, 
We can work like this if we're moving towards headstand. We're not doing a full headstand today, but this is a really interesting practice anyway. So coming into child's pose if you need to. Otherwise, bringing the hands down alongside the body, lifting up through the hips, dangling the hip down. The points of awareness here are spreading through the hands or the side of the wrist, depending on what forearm, forearm option you have. Lifting up through the arms, really lifting so you have that strength and that support. And here you have the option of lifting one leg. The right leg may come up. Exploring that lovely long length and the extra weight that moves down into the arms. Bringing the right leg down and lifting up through the left. Pushing down through the elbows and the arms here. Caution here. And drawing that foot down, coming down through child's pose, Balasana. With the hands this time alongside the shin, so you come into that tiny little flexion, that little ball, the rock. With the forehead resting down onto the mat, coming back to the breast. So you have that sense of pressure around the front of the body on top of the legs. And you can breathe into the back body. Breathing here. So in the Yoga Sutras, it talks about dharana or concentration in lots of different amazing <laughs> ways. Uh, one of the quotes is, uh, dharana is the binding of the mind to one place, object or idea. And we'll work with that with our Trataka of candle gazing. And it says, when the chittam or some total of the mind is being bound by one thing or bound in one place, it is dharana. So in these asana that I'm offering you, I'm offering you ways in that are fairly subtle to do with the location of where concentration comes from, hence the focus around the forehead, the pineal gland and the crown of the head. So this time we're going to come up through our downward dog with our arms extended alongside the mat, tucking our toes under, lifting up through the legs, remembering that the head hangs heavy and freely, lifting up onto the toes and exhaling through the heels, inhaling up onto toes, exhale through and down and bring the heels down, release the neck, <laughs> wiggle the neck to make sure you've released, looking left looking right. You may want to explore a rotation in your downward dog so bring the feet to the side of the mat and the hands to the side of the mat so you widen your dog into a mongrel dog and we're going to inhale lift the right arm off the ground three point downward dog here bringing the right hand to the side of the ankle looking under the left armpit so this is optional you can always come into your downward dog and not explore this. Bringing the gaze back through centre, lifting up through the left hand and drawing the left hand to right ankle, looking under right armpit. Feeling that expansion around the back of the shoulder blade, gazing under the right armpit before releasing the hand back down. Padding the hands towards the feet, coming into Uttanasana, slightly wider Uttanasana than you might be used to, dangling the head. Taking the weight into the legs, bend the knees, ensure the crown is heavy. And we're going to come through Ragdoll, bring the hands to the elbows, bending the knees and drawing each vertebra up on top of each other as you come up into your standing pose, your Tadasana or mountain pose. Take your time as you come up. I'm just adjusting the angle of the screen to come up into your Tadasana standing pose. And you'll want to notice when you're in your standing pose, whether your gaze is fixed, your drishti is fixed, whether your eyes are closed or whether you've come into peripheral vision. So bring your fingers in front of you and gaze at your thumbs. Okay, so you're gazing at your thumbs. You've got your thumbs up. We're going to bring the thumbs out to the outside edges and I want you to see if you can expand your gaze. Excuse me, I'm burping. Expand your gaze 
<clears throat> so the fingers come to the outside of your gaze. And when you can no longer see your fingers, I'd like you to stop. So we're coming into your peripheral vision. Can you see your fingers? Can you soften the gaze? Can you expand the gaze? Remember to breathe and stop the fingers when you come into your peripheral vision. Lovely. Now I'd like you to close your eyes without moving. How does it feel to be standing this way with the eyes closed? And can you see anything on the inside of your eyelids? Is there a residue of light on the inside of your eyelids? Are there any patterns? Is it red? Is it black? Is there a sense of darkness? Or is there still a sense of light coming in? Open the eyes, see if you can see the thumb moving into a soft gaze and draw the thumbs in towards the center, coming into your fixed focal point, your drishti. So you'll notice that your eyes will have to adjust to fix onto both thumbs. Lovely. Bring the hands together, coming into heart center. So we're coming into chair pose, first of all. If you have a brick, feel free to use a brick. Otherwise, we're gonna sink down so the tailbone draws down. You can see my profile here with hands in Anjali, ensuring that the lumbar is protected by the position of the pelvis. So the pelvis is coming into a posterior tilt slightly to protect the lumbar. How are the knees? How are the ankles? Sinking down, taking the weight into the quads. Neck long, chin tucked in. Attention around the back of the forehead. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Now see if you can lift up onto your tippy toes, using your drishti to focus and concentrate on a fixed point. Maybe now close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. How possible is that? How does that change things? It makes it pretty difficult because our sight is so integral to our balance. Can you close your eyes, drawing the heels down and lifting up through Tadasana, bringing the hands up past the head. I have to move the screen so you can see. So you come into pencil Tadasana and lift up onto the toes. So you're balancing here onto your tippy toes with the fingers pointing the gaze, the drishti lifts up between the hands. And then drawing the gaze down, we're gonna come through our Utkatasana chair pose, bringing the hands to the heart center, sinking down through the tailbone, ensuring our knees are happy, our ankles are happy, our lower back is happy. Coming into your Utkatasana chair pose, coming onto tippy toes. Lifting up onto tippy toes, gazing, fixed drishti, Closing the eyes, exploring how that feels, and lift up and out. So we're going to come into Garandasa now. So the chair pose is really good prep here for what we're doing with our legs. Taking the weight into the left leg, we're sinking the hips down, same position as chair, and then we cross the leg over. So we're doing the same thing as we did in supine. Can you double cross the leg? as you were on the floor. Sinking the hips down, keeping the neck long, opening up your wingspan, coming into eagle. So the right hand now is crossing over the left. And that crossing over action takes place all the way up past the elbow. The back of the hands come together or the front of the palms come together. We lift the elbow up and away whilst sinking tailbone down. Eagle pose, now notice where your attention is with your gaze. Your drishti may have come into an automatic peripheral vision or is it fixed? What do you notice? Fixing the gaze here before releasing out to the side. So coming out of your eagle pose. This time we take the weight into the right leg, crossing the legs over, relinking the foot if that is possible for you. Sinking the weight down, bringing the arms across beyond the elbows. The back of the hands come together 
before you double wrap, lifting the elbows up and sinking down. So this opposing movement taking place, fixing the gaze. Does the gaze automatically come into your peripheral vision? Sinking down here, lifting up through the elbows to access the back of the shoulders, the rhomboid. Fixing your gaze, lovely. And then expanding and releasing out to the side, lovely through your eagle. So quite a lot of concentration coming through your eagle pose. Coming up onto the toes, hands and anjali. And we're gonna sink the weight down, mindful of the knees as you come down and through onto your tippy toes. So the weight's coming down to the quads and I'm just gonna move the angle of the screen. As you come down into your little perch, which is here, lovely. We're gonna sit our sitting bones down with some padding to come into Gomakasana, cow face pose, which is another one. That's a strong bind with a sense of focus and a sense of sense of draw. So the left leg comes down with the right leg stacked on top, so the knees are stacked here. We've got this strong internal rotation. If the hips are not happy with this action, you can bring the right ankle in front of the right hip space, or you can bring the foot over. The key thing is that your sitting bones are rooted and equally placed. So this is an Ardha Matsundrasana leg formation, or you come into your full Gomakasana. If your legs are here, press down through the feet, lifting up the sitting bones and draw yourself down. So you want your spine to feel like it can move in different directions. If the right leg is on top, we're gonna lift up the right arm, drawing the left arm behind the spine and clasp the hands. So obviously you can do this with a strap or you can get hold of your t-shirt or it may be the case that the hands come together. Relaxing the shoulders, exhaling through the nose, releasing any tension within the pelvic region, in the shoulder girdle, inhaling and exhaling, drawing the chin in, lengthening the back of the neck muscles, bringing your attention up to your third eye center and to the chakra which is said to be at the forehead, but it's also said to be linked to the pineal gland, that pea-sized gland in the center of the head. How does it feel to come into Gomakasana cow face pose? Can there be some liberation found within this bondage? Outwardly as in inwardly. And then if there's space to do so, you can draw the torso forwards to come into a slight forward fold, obviously with the arms still in position. How does that change things? Just the drawing up through the elbow and release very carefully out of your cow face arms, widening your wingspan before drawing yourself into your sitting bones to come to the other side. So you can release the right leg under the left leg. There may be difference on this side compared to the other. If you're coming into the full Gomakasana, you lift up through, drop in the sitting bones. If you're coming into a slightly gentler hip position, keep the knee up or keep the foot in front of the hip point. So wherever you are here, indeed if any of those just don't work for you tonight, come into the knee because the arm positions can often be enough. Make sure those sitting bones are rooted and you have that lovely movement so the spine is free, which is why we use props so we can free up the spine. Lift up the left arm, gathering the right behind the spine. Can you get hold of this side? How does this side feel compared to the other side? If you're getting any cramping from striving, from straining the hand, give yourself an opportunity to release any of that and get hold of the t-shirt behind. This side may be very different. So for instance, I'm right-handed. This side is incredibly tricky. 
compared to the right side and that's due to a bit of scoliosis in the spine so just notice how this side feels compared to the other side. Tucking the chin in, lengthening the back of the neck muscles, breathing into the space and then see if there's space for you to now fold forwards. How does that feel? Focusing your drishti, your gaze in front of you, just all releasing up and out. Release the arms, open up that wingspan and draw yourself out of going the cast my legs. So we're going to come into a shat karma. So we're getting very, we're getting deep into cleansing practices with shat karmas here. There's these medieval practices that are in the books from yonks ago. I want you to get hold of your candle or your lingam. So a lingam being a one pointed shape. So it's almost, almost like a little mini monolithic creation. And again, that is included in the medieval text, the concept of a lingam. You're using a lingam or you're using a candle. Here's one I had from earlier. It's, <laughs> you want this to be at about chest height. You don't really want it to be on the floor because it needs to be in alignment with your gaze. Make sure the wick is a suitable length so the flame is pointed. Now, if you've got lots of wax, it may be wavering around. I'm going to get rid of my wax by just draw ripping it all over the table because I love playing with wax. You want the flame to be fairly pointed and not flickering too much. It's tricky to impose that on a candle. It's got a bit of a life of its own. Make sure that candle is at the right height. We're coming into a seated meditation position. That can be Sukhasana with the cross-legged position like you would do at school. Or you can come into Adept's Pose, Sadasana, where you have the heel coming into the um, perineum, perineum and the other heel is stacked on top. It comes into the top of the vulva. We're all ladies here, so this is Siddhi Yoni Asana, not Siddhasana. Ladies, slightly different. So coming into a position that works for you, just make sure the knees are happy and padding underneath the buttocks. Your sit bones are grounded, you have some space to rock and roll. Your spine is erect, not stiff and rigid. There's some space there, so you feel like you can move around. You don't want to feel like you're in tension or rigidity. Ensure the shoulders feel relaxed and away from the body and the ears. The neck long, chin tucked in. A sense of height coming up through the crown of the head, as though someone's pulling a rope from your crown. So you've got this lovely long line along the danda, crown of the head, down to the tailbone. Danda is in Dandasana. So we're going to come into Tritaka. Um, so Tritak is Sanskrit for gaze. And you may have noticed that there's quite a lot of gaze related stuff going on in Noda. So Everyone really is aiming for that feeling of being whole and comfortable in one's own skin. And that's what we are trying to cultivate within this practice of candle gazing or Chitaka or Lingam gazing. So in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, which is the medieval text that I spoke about, so it's 15th century, it says Chitaka eradicates all eye diseases, fatigue or, and sloth, and closes the doorway to all these problems. So it's a big claim. It improves eyesight, vision, provides stress relief and deep relaxation. It deepens sleep and cures sleep-related disorders such as insomnia, nightmares. Mentally and emotionally, it improves concentration, intelligence and memory. It cultivates self-confidence, patience and willpower improves decision-making ability, and it can help to overcome mental, behavioural and emotional ailments. But essentially it calms the mind, creates a sense of inner peace and silence. Now the wonderful thing about Trataka is that although this is a, a yogic um, practice, I think most of us may have come to this quite instinctively, and I know I did, this just 
sitting and staring at a flame. It's such a uh, uh, it's such a thing that's inside of us. It's not something that needs to be imposed. So I have distinct memories of doing this on a boat on the Norfolk Broads as like a thirteen year old, just playing with wax and staring at a flame for hours on end. So coming into the body, drawing the mind into the body, and simply gaze at the tip of the flame or the tip of your lingam, relaxing around the eye socket, relaxing around the jaw, almost scanning a line between the crown and your root, which is your perineum, perineum region, so in between the vulva and the anus. And just scanning that lovely long line while staring at the tip of the candle with a sense of that peripheral vision coming through so the sense of expanded gaze softened gaze so firstly we're going to connect with the flame secondly we're going to take that image when we close the eyes into the pineal gland to allow for that pineal gland to almost become a light so in Sanskrit, there's a really interesting word for the seat of light that exists in the pineal gland, but they didn't know it was a pineal gland. They had a word for it anyway, called the joy pikendra, so the seat of light. So we take that image into the back of the head whilst closing the eyes, after staring at the flame, and then we take that light into the heart space, into the chest. Okay. So when we stare at the flame, we're staring at the flame and not really allowing the eyes to blink. And when we stare at that flame, it may be the case that lots of tears come quite naturally into the eyes. And I'd like you to allow for that to happen, to take place. And try not to strain as you stare into the flame because you don't want that sense of hardness to come in. You want to soften the gaze. Just looking at the top of the tip of the flame, allowing for a sense of calm to come, to come through the body, inhaling through the nostrils and exhaling through the nostrils with a sense of peace and tranquility. And just notice if you're going a little bit cross-eyed, when that begins to happen, Close the eyes, drawing that light into the pineal gland. So you may be able to see that sort of residue of light on the inside of the eyelid. Draw that light into the back of the skull, the centre of the skull, into the pineal gland, into the joy pikendra, into the seat of light within the mind. As an intention, can you see the flame of light in your mind's eye? And you may be able to perceive that as a residue on the inside of the eyelids. A residue of light. Now take that light and draw it down into the heart space. Now this is more of an intention, a sankalpa, than anything. Can you allow for that light to seep down into your heart space? Allow for compassion and kindness, for light, to fully light up that region of your chest. Sense of warmth, the light within. Now if you lose it, it will become lost. Gaze back at the candle, coming to the tip of the candle here the tip of the flame, gazing back and absorbing the light. Breathing and simply gazing softly at the candle that is external to you, concentrating on the aspects Concentrating on the tip of the lingam, this is the lingam that you're working with. 
and allow for that image of the light or the tip, that sense of one pointedness, beginning to break through any sense of duality or conflict or opposing ideas by focusing on this one point, the tip of the flame or linden. If there are tears coming through, allow for those tears to come through. It may be the case that without blinking, there's a sense of dryness, a sense of strain. And the strain definitely comes about if we haven't prepped the eyes and are not used to this. So see if you can soften the eyes. Do not let it feel like a battle. And gaze softly at the light. Before closing the eyes, bring that light in towards the centre of the skull, letting that light up the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is very much to do with our circadian rhythms and produces melatonin. So this technique is meant to be really good for insomnia, just for balancing out that melatonin in us. Allow the light to fill up inside of the skull, focusing on that central point, the pineal gland. The sense of one pointedness, a sense of concentration on a fixed point and draw that light down into the heart space, into that cavity inside the rib case. This region of soft expansion, the light within, let that light light up around the heart space. How does that feel? Without grasping onto any specific notion, can you still see any residue of the light in a really practical sense? Fixing your mind on that point perceived on the inside of the eyelid. Let that light fill the mind and take that light down into the heart space. The pineal gland secretes neuroendocrine. The light sensitive gland lets the light in and darkness. So you're moving between this triangle of points between your lingam, your candle, your forehead, the pineal gland, and down into the heart space. And if you forget what it looks like, gaze back at the candle or the lingam and mirror that in your heart. Noticing the ebb and the flow of the breath. Becoming a beacon of peace and light. A beacon of awareness. Turning to a still place within. And you have the choice now to carry on in this seated position with the eyes either gazing at the candle, the eyes closed, or you can come to lie on your back. coming to this sense of concentration, sense of one pointedness in this three part samyana as we move into states of meditation.
So we're beginning to train the mind. Because meditation isn't controlling the mind and emptying the mind. It's not as straightforward as that. It's about training the mind, yes. So the mind comes into a state of stillness and awareness. Not by blocking anything out, but just by simply being aware of the tendency of the wavering and the untetheredness of our mind. So as I said last week, it's like training horses. It's as though you're a charioteer that mentioned in the Upanishads, which are thousands and thousands of years old, before the Bible. This concept of mastering the senses, mastering the mind through the breath. And coming into this sense of awareness. So next week we'll be moving from dharana concentration to dhyana meditation and then week after samadhi which is absorption, full absorption. And when we move into those states it's not sitter and object, we move between the boundaries as it were the boundaries become more porous and it just becomes total awareness and absorption so we'll work with that in the next two weeks but wherever your awareness is right now come back to the breath come back to the weight rooting down through the sitting bones Come back to the danda, that energetic line between the perineum and the crown of the head. And if you've got your eyes closed, you can either roll onto your side if you're in your shavasana, or open the eyes at the end of the following sound, or nada coming from the singing bowl, the vibration. Simply being aware of the vibration as it comes across the zoom. really experiencing that vibration. If we'll bring the hands to heart center, touching Anjana Chakra, the third eye center at the forehead, bowing down in acknowledgement of one another in the space in between, really allow the forehead to come down. Namaste.